We're happy now. <laughs> well, back. good morning, everybody. We're live. And we, and Pastor Uriel and I, he is brilliant. I don't know what he did, but he he said he didn't do anything, but he did something because we, we've been talking, trying to see if we can get this thing to glitch for a half an hour. And this thing has been perfect so far. So Lord bless it to continue to be perfect. So yes. he he reset his computer. I reset some of my computer. We did some, we did try to everything we could think of. He found out all kinds of stuff and he's brilliant. He fixed it for us, I think. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, cause you weren't on with us yesterday or the couple of days before we've had major computer problems, but I'm telling you, it's just interesting because Uriel says he didn't really do anything. And all I did was read just, you know, turn off my computer and turn it back on. And so I didn't really do anything either. So I don't know. I'm, I think this, there's a spiritual battle that doesn't want us to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and about what Jesus did for you and me so that we could have our sins forgiven. You know, I just, I just think it's amazing what's go, that we had so much trouble for the last couple of days, but today yeah. for 30 minutes, I promise you for 30 plus minutes, we have been on, we've tested it. Everything's fine. Year you went live. It, it, so hopefully we will have no more problems doing this. So thank you. Um, good morning, Sharon J. I hope you all can hear us and I hope things are well, let us know so that, so that if we think that we don't have any problems and we don't, that's great. But let us know if we don't. So we know for sure. Yep. She's anyway. putting a lot of happy, happy faces. So it looks like we're good. Oh, I didn't, I don't see any happy faces on mine, but I don't, I don't get everything anyway. I don't think so. Yeah, what I do is I'll, I'll go to Facebook as well as what oh. we have just to see everything's okay. So yeah. Oh, cool. Good. See, he knows what he's doing. He's amazing. So anyway, we were just talking here, just talking about, um, about the new justice that we have, uh, mm. Amy Comey Barrett. And, you know, I know that lots of people, there's, there's part of the country that thinks that, that that's a sham, but you know, I got to tell you, um, honestly, from my, from my perspective, uh, I am thankful that whether I agree with her politically or not, whatever, I'm thankful that they, they went ahead and did that because that's exactly what they were supposed to do constitutionally. And they did. No matter what anybody says, they followed the Constitution. And I'm and I'm yep. always happy when our Congress and when the House and the Senate, when they follow the Constitution, that makes me happy because that's where we get our freedoms from. And I want us to continue to follow the Constitution of the United States. And I think they did that. And again, I don't I'm not going to tell you um, if I agree or don't agree with with her being on the court doesn't really matter. But what I do agree with is that they follow the constitution and it's a true blessing that they did. So, so thank you for uh, our, our Congress doing the right thing and, um, and making something happen constitutionally. So I appreciate that part of it. Anyway. Yes. What were you thinking of Uriel? You were saying some things earlier. You want to share anything? Oh, um, no, I was you, telling Rick earlier, um, how all this, you know, everything that we had happened with our problems and everything, you know, Rick is right. Like the enemy really doesn't want to get this to get out of all the passages of scripture that we're at, yeah. you know, why, why? And so, you know, it was really interesting when I was telling Rick that as the day progressed, things just got better here at the church, but we could sense, you know, just the, the spiritual warfare and, but you know, it's the power of prayer. And when we trust in God, it's great, you know, but, um, the other thing I was sharing, Rick, was, you know, the COVID cases here in the county, yeah. it's really interesting. Only 120 beds are in all of Riverside County and only 12, like 1,210 cases have been confirmed in uh, all of Riverside County. So I guess that's really good news, you know, as far as for the, the COVID situation. And so. So, so I don't know how many beds we have in, in, um, in the hospitals. Uh, I don't know how many that is. I don't know what percentage that is, but that sure seems very low. And I'm thankful yeah. that it's very low that people are in the hospital because of this. That's great. Um, hopefully they'll allow us to begin to get back to some kind of normalcy then if, if that continues, but, but are they concerned? I don't know if you heard this or not, but my question was, are they concerned that I think what you said, 33% of the people have been tested a third. Yeah. Yeah. 
only one third of all of Riverside County, they, they claim have only been tested and they're wanting the rest, you know, to, to get tested to confirm that how many actual true cases we have so they can have, you know, more specific numbers, I guess. But, but they won't test you or they wouldn't anyway, they wouldn't test you unless you had symptoms. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And when I was just listening to this announcer, he was saying, if you want to get tested, and he gave all the different areas that you can get tested here in uh, the Coachella huh. Valley. Wow. So. Well, I, th I think that's all very curious to me. I, 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 part of me does just doesn't believe what's going on because it's like, okay, if that's all the cases that we have, if that's all the beds that are there, then why are we shutting down again? Why are we hurting businesses and hurting schools and hurting churches? And, you know, uh, wh why are we doing all that if this is the issue? And I, I don't know. I just, um, you yeah. got to pray for me because I don't, I don't have the best you know, attitude about. You know, I understand. About I agree with you. <laughs> you know what, you know, it's what I was telling Rick earlier. And th this was a, uh, the case down here is when you drive around, you see all retail stores are open. I didn't see one closed, but. You know, you saw restaurants outside. Um, mm. Churches are shut down. Here's a really interesting thing that I found out. I went on the website. The Cabazon Mall is still open. The Living Desert is still open. That's really interesting because that was part of the of the group that's supposed to be shut down was uh, zoos and museums. So I, I don't understand. Well, maybe people are just saying, "Forget it. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do this." You Possibly. know. <laughs> If, if you want to arrest me, arrest me. Maybe that's, maybe people are rebelling. I don't, I don't know, but, but I know that people are really tired of losing money and especially small businesses. And I, my heart goes out to those people, man, I'll tell yes. you, they're the lifeblood of our economy, those small businesses. And it, it just, it just breaks my heart to see that we're, we're jerking them around so much. Cause you know, that, that affects everything in our, in our communities and our school systems that affects that. And it, and it feels like, it feels like we have a, uh, I don't know, I'll just be quiet. I don't, it just feels like we have a big, some bigger issues that, that are trying yeah. to be solved. And it's, it's not just a COVID issue, but no, it's, it's so politicized that it's, that's hurting everybody. So I don't know, but you know what? It's not going to stop the church. We are no, the church and, uh, and it's not going to stop us from being who we're supposed to be. We're, we're the church. We're going to bring the gospel of Christ to every person that we come in contact with. And I hope that this will make us, honestly, I hope that this will make us more urgent as the church. The, the What we call Las Palmas Community Church is a building. The church isn't the church until you show up. Then it becomes the church because right. you are the church. So when we get there on Sunday or whenever, when that happens, the church will be on that property. And so the church is there then. And yes. we're, we're going to have a great time. I'm looking forward to Sunday. I'm, I really think Sunday is going to be a great time. We're going to have outside church, and I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, those guys are making everything happen. Bill and I had a good conversation yesterday about what to do with traffic flow and how to put it all together. And, the, and so it's going to start at 933. We want you to know this, and we want you to tell everybody, please get on the phone. Talk, all of you communicate. Get excited about what God's going to do because we can all be there. We'll be outside. So we want you to come, and we want you to park your cars. And if you have lawn chairs that you want to bring with you, just take your lawn chairs out and set them out in front of your cars, and you can watch and listen be able to see it'll be it'll be amazing we have a we have you remember the captain billy bus that we have the captain billy bus is a bus that was given to us it's an it's an old box truck like a u-haul truck yeah. and one of the sides it was made so that one of the sides comes down folds down it, you know you wouldn't know it unless you saw it folded down it folds down it makes a stage about four feet high isn't it about four feet high Uriel? maybe a little taller the stage yeah yeah Four feet high. Yeah, yeah. And so that stage, so we're going to put that truck out in, in the in the parking lot where you're going to come and see a wonderful configuration. Put that truck in the parking lot with the stage down so that everybody will be able to see. We're going to have some seats under some canopies. We're going to have some seats under uh, awnings. Uh, that's already worked out. We're going to, we're going to, so that we'll have water there. You can get water, pick up water if you want. The service, we're going to try to make the service streamline it because we don't want people to, to have to say, 
set out in the sun that long, but it was not supposed to be hot. It's supposed to be a great day. Um, yeah. We're supposed to have a, a, a small breeze. We hope we're praying for a small breeze that day. Not too, not too big a one to blow us off the stage, but, <laughs> but a small no. breeze. Yeah. yeah. And it, it should, should be, be nice. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to have a great time. And so you can, if you don't have a lawn chair, come anyway and park your car. We'll have chairs for you. If, but, but man, I'll tell you, you'd be really comfortable to bring your lawn chair and set it out in front of the, in front of your car and just and watch what goes on. It's going to be a great day, but more than all of this stuff, the, all the drama that we're doing to set up a church service, more than all that, I really believe that God is going to really do some awesome things for us on Sunday. I think Sunday is going to be a great day. Satan, every, I promise you, you this i don't want to see demons behind every bush that's not what i want to do but i'm telling you this satan has tried so hard to keep us from getting this done and to and he's trying he's tried hard to keep us from from you know getting this this message of the of the the crucifixion and the resurrection he's tried very hard for people not to hear that but you know nothing is going to stop us nothing is going to stop us and we believe yeah, that i think it's going to be great you know yeah. we did it with our youth on sunday Oh yeah. And man, it, it wasn't a lot of work, but it was just kind of like a small vacation, what Sunday's going to look like. But I tell you, the kids had a blast. You know, we had my, my sons were like that. It was so good just to be outside and, you know, it was really nice. So I think really Sunday being outside for us as a whole, it's going to be a great day. Yeah. Yeah, I might even break all tradition and wear shorts. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that, but I thought about it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Boy, now, now, trust me, I'm going to start getting emails. Oh, Pastor, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, whatever. I'm going to give you a call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are going to be certain people who aren't going to like that I wear shorts on, on Sunday. Uh, anyway, shorts and flip flops. <laughs> but you never know. You just might. You might have to do it to stay comfortable. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Well, enough That'd of that. Great. Enough of that frivolity. Let <laughs> Let's pray and ask the Lord to be with us. You want to lead us today, Pastor? Sure. All right. <laughs> Lord, uh, we thank you. Lord, we thank you of the joy that, you know, we can just, you know, um, exhibit that, Father. And um, Lord, I think of about where Paul said in Philippians 3, Lord, he says, you know, that let the have the joy of the Lord. And he says, I never get tired of you because it's the safeguard, Lord. Joy in, your, in you is the part of your spirit that's not like the, the what the world says joy, but it's to to delight in you, what Christ has done for us, Lord, and what he did, and then he was erected in the dead, and we have that opportunity, Lord, in Christ to, uh, to be new creations in him, and the old person has passed away. So I thank you for that, Father. Lord, uh, we continue to pray, Father, for our church, for other believers of you know, the body of Christ, Lord, as, you know, people are tired of what's going around, but Lord, we ask with the power of your spirit, empower us lord spiritually you know uh empower us through our soul and physically in every aspect father we pray today lord as we we are wrapping up chapters 27 of matthew lord let it speak to us as we would speak well let it be not of our own words but by the power of your spirit to proclaim the word lord as ambassadors we lift up to you lord uh, everything that's going on we lift up to our youth our children lord our adults uh our county lord our for the nation as uh, the voting is going to come, that we would all come out and do the right thing and vote according to your word. And I thank you, Lord, um, for everything that you're doing today, Lord. I just pray this in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, thank you so much for letting us come and study your word together. Lord, I pray that the power, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ will be seen today. I pray, Lord God, that you will let us understand that you will transform our life that you will change our thinking, that you will help us to mold into what you want us to be. I pray, Father, that we will learn again the power of the resurrection as we read through the scripture today. I pray, Lord God, that our church, Father, would be operating in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I pray, thank, and I pray, Lord, with thanksgiving that you have overcome even death itself and that you have overcome death not only for yourself, but you've overcome death for us, that you have taken our sin and left it in a grave and we no longer lord god need to need to be um be 
dealing with the sin of our history. Help us to have short memories about the things of our past because you, Lord, yes. remember it no more against us. So, Father, let us not use it to uh, and use it to bother ourselves or to to uh, to really, Lord Jesus, bring a curse on ourselves. I pray, God, that you would help us to 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 just do what you do with sin. I pray that you would help us to handle sin the way that you handled it. You're the one that took upon yourself. You're the one that dealt with it and help us to learn, Father, how to deal with sin the way that you've dealt with it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us not to be um, not to be so liberal that our brains fall out. Help us not to be so conservative that they get stuck. Help us, Lord Jesus, to read your word with its perfect intent and let the intent of your word, let the message of your word, Lord, ring true to us today. Thank you, Jesus, for taking care of us. Thank you, Father, for all those people that have asked us to pray for them. We lift them up today. You know who they are. There's people running through all of our minds right now, Lord God, that you, that you, um, you're listening to the, our prayers, Lord, all of, I don't know how you do that, but you listen to all of us pray at the same time. Father, all those people that we're concerned about, all those people that are on our mind, I'm, I'm thinking of four or five right now, Lord God, mm -hmm. but thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering. Thank you for knowing the thoughts of our minds, Lord Jesus, so that we might lift those thoughts as prayers to your throne. And thank you, Father, that you save the prayers of the saints under the altar. Thank you that you put them in jars and save them there under the altars, Lord Jesus. They must be so precious to you that you would that you would save those prayers. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you again, Lord God, for this day and for what it brings. We ask, Father, Father that you would let us give our life to you and that you would let us give this day to you and that you would let us bring you glory by the way that we live our life in this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we are so grateful. Thank you, Father, that that our, our technology is working well today. Thank you, Lord. We are in the, the 27th chapter, and we're at verse 57. So uh, we left yesterday with Jesus on a cross, and we left yesterday uh, that he had been taken down, uh, but there's, there were some women there. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and and the mother of uh, the sons of Zebedee was there, and Mary Magdalene was there, and they were a little far off. It says they were watching all of this happen to Jesus. Um, it's interesting that we don't find any of, of, of the men, <laughs> the disciples. They, it doesn't say anything about them. They're all run away by now. They're they're even Peter's gone back to fishing. You know, I mean, he's 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 just gone back to try to get at some normalcy in his life, I guess. And so everybody's kind of scattered except for these women. And then Joseph of Arimathea takes the body of Jesus down and he uh, puts it in a new tomb, which we talked about yesterday that I thought was really important. He puts the body in a new tomb. He gets, re he asks for permission to do that. He gets permission to do that. And he takes the body and lays it in a tomb. So uh, then we come to verse, I think it's verse 57. Let's go there and see what it says. So I think that's the background of what we talked about yesterday. The, yeah, new, tomb the, was, the new tune was really important for us yesterday. And, and the reason that's important is because, because they could have, they could have gone in and I mean, there was no DNA testing, whatever. I mean, if they would have found bones in there and that kind of stuff, they would have said, look, see, he's never raised from the dead, but because Jesus was the only one to ever be in that tomb, when his physical self was gone, there was no way they could question whether he had rose from the dead or not. Um, they knew he wasn't there anyway. They knew the tomb was empty. And, and there was, there's several theories, <laughs> several theories about that that just make no sense at all. There's a theory called the swoon theory. I don't know if you, have you ever heard of that, Uriel, the swoon theory? Maybe no. not called that, but the Explain. swoon theory, what's that? Explain. Oh, <laughs> the swoon theory was was that Jesus Jesus was um, he because he was so destroyed physically, and he was hanging on the cross that he just basically passed out. He swooned, <laughs> and he basically passed out, and and he didn't really die, and so then he came back alive. Well, listen, folks, the, somebody somebody wrote a little a little thing on this. I thought it was hilarious. They said, okay just tell me something you take you take anybody you want to take and you you beat them you slap them around you beat them up 
Then you take them and you flog them 40 times that, and it tears all the, tears all the, the flesh off their back. Then you make them carry a 125 pound beam and then Cyrus, Cyrus of Cyrene carries it the rest of the way. Then you, 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 you let that happen. Then you hang him on a cross for six hours or nine hours, whatever it was. Was it six or nine? I think it was six. Anyway, you hang him on a cross for that long. And then you jab a, then you jab a sword into his side so that you puncture his heart. And then you, then you, then you think he's dead. You take him down, you lay him in a tomb. And in, and in two days, he's out running around. Two to three days, he's out. You, you're telling me that's going to happen? I mean, come on. <laughs> we know people that have been in traumatic car accidents who have gone through the same kind of stuff that they're not out for months. You, you know, yeah. so are you telling me you really believe that? Okay, come on. That's just ridiculous. So when somebody when somebody puts it to you that way, it's like, well, I, I guess that doesn't sound too feasible. <laughs> so, And the other theory was that, that they came and stole his body. That's why there wasn't any Jesus in a tomb. Well, that theory has been debunked because they put a Roman soldiers there in front of the stone and it would take two or three really strong people to roll that stone away by itself. So they would have to overcome the guards and then have to roll the stone away. They'd have to overcome the guards. And if those, you have to realize this, if those guards that were placed there didn't fulfill their duty by keeping the body there, then they were, they were given a death sentence. They were going to die. So, so the bottom line is they're not giving up their life for some, for some guy that's half dead. If he's not really, if he's not really dead, but if he, if he is, yeah, even if he is dead and he's in the tomb, they're not giving up a body. So how is Jesus, by the way, if he just swooned, how's he supposed to get the rock out of the way? I'm just, it's just ridiculous. All these conversations, he had to be resurrected. And so that's where we're going to come to today. And I wanted to just kind of give you some of that conversation before we get to what happens here in the scripture. So, Verse 57 says, as evening approached, there came a rich man from, and this is kind of what we did yesterday, from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself uh, became a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a, in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb. That's why, that's what we, that's where we were yesterday, Right. Uh, that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of their entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. So Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, Mary and Martha probably, uh, or I mean, I don't know what other Mary it is. Do you have any idea who that might be? Uriel, does your, did your study say who that might be? No, I'm not. Yeah. We can research it really quick. Give me a second. I'll let you know. <laughs> See, I knew, he, I knew he would get on that. Anyway, so there's two Marys. It could be the mother. I don't I don't think it's the mother of Jesus, but I. But it, it could be. I don't know, because I, I, I think it might have said, um, let me see, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. I don't think they would call Jesus's mother the other yeah, Mary. Yeah, it's the mother, of, the mother of James and Joseph. Oh, that's I'm who they think it is? Well, I'm looking at another translation. Other translations from like new new NLT and I. Oh okay. well, it, what it says it's the mother of James and Joseph. Mother of James and Joseph. Okay, well, who's the mother of James and Joseph? Is, is that Mary? It says yeah, and it, and it says NLT says among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary in parentheses, the mother of James and Joseph, and mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Yeah. So it could have been could have been the mother of Jesus. I'm not I don't know. I'm not sure. The only thing that makes me hesitant to say that is because it says because it really doesn't tell us which Mary it is, but it could be Jesus's mother. But it says mother, it says the other mother, the other Mary. And I don't know if they would call the mother of Jesus the other Mary because they've always called her uh, Jesus. Yeah, this mom. Is, yeah, they're I get I get what you're saying because I looked it up in the Greek and there's Mary, mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, Mary Cleophas, the mother of James the Less, yeah, Mary, the mother of John Mark and sister of, of Barnabas, and then Mary. Yes, yeah, so there's, lo there's lots of Marys, but they always say Mary, the mother of Jesus, bef and, and everywhere else. So, but this could be. I, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying I don't know who it is exactly. So, so that's good. Okay. So, the, the 62 says the next day, uh, the next day. The one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate. So what's the preparation day, Uriel? Do you know what that is in your studies? No, I have not looked. 
Okay. Give me one second and I will let you know. <laughs> He'll look it up. See, that's, that's what I like about Uriel being on here. He looks everything up and he's so fast with it. Okay. The next day, the one day after preparation day, I think it's preparing for the uh, Passover. Is it preparing for the Passover feast or is, what is that? Or is that a different preparation? No, I think it was the Passover. I don't. Uh, I'm looking it up right now. Okay. Well, as he looks it up, let's go. The next day, the one after preparation day. So it wasn't the one before. It was an after the preparation day. This tells us what day it is. That's why it's important to know what preparation day means. And we'll, you'll see in a second. Um, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remembered that while he was still alive, the deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Okay, so there's Joseph of Arimathea. He takes the body. He puts it in a tomb. The, then, then the chief priest come and says, he's, he's telling everybody he's going to rise from the dead. Let's just, let's just prove that he can't rise from the dead. Be why? Because they thought, this is what they thought, even, even if he was still alive, <laughs> I can't believe they would think that because they would they'd have to know he's dead. But anyway, let's just let's just guard this tomb so that people can't take his body and and he can't escape somehow, some miraculous way he can't escape because he we will have guards there oh, oh, standing in front of the tomb. And so we can't let anybody think that he fulfilled that prophecy. That's the important thing. They don't, he prophesied that he would rise in three days. And he's saying, we can't allow anyone to think that ever. Right. Anyway, what, what do you, did you find anything there, Uriel? No, not yet. No one's really commenting on it. I'm still searching it. I look enduring word commentary. I know it's under enduring word commentary. Um, verse 62. You'll find it there. I think there's some conversation yeah, about it there. We'll do. Anyway. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so he goes on to say, sir, they said we, rem and if you can't find it, don't worry about it. I will talk about it in a minute. So they said, we remember that while he was still alive, the deceiver said, who's the deceiver? Jesus. They're, they're calling Jesus the deceiver. Okay. After three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he had been raised from the dead. So remember I said that they, they even if they did think he was dead, but then I said, but they can't think he's not dead. Well, this is why I know that. They, they believe he's dead. They really believe that they're good. Not that somehow he's going to get out, like if you have the swoon theory. Not somehow he's going to get out, but that somebody came and took him. So that's what they were afraid of. They were afraid that someone would come and, and steal his body. The last deception will be worse than the first. So they're saying this, if he gets out of the tomb, it's going to be over. It's going to be worse than the first deception. What they're saying is the, he first deceived people by his miracles and the things he did. And he first deceived them to believing he was the Messiah. If, if he, if he pulls this off, if he rises from the dead, the chief priests say, it, they they say it'll be worse. Why? Because more people will believe. In fact, you couldn't deny it. I believe that's what they're saying. The deception is going to be so great that people will not will can't deny what he said about being the Messiah, and they don't want him to be the Messiah. And so they're trying to take care of this by saying, "Keep him in the tomb. Let his body rot in there." Yeah, yeah, the Jews believe that the soul left the body on the third day. So God, yeah. okay, I'm going to play on your terms. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to rise on the third day. So you guys have no excuse in your tradition and your beliefs that he did not truly rise. <laughs> right. And, oh. if they, and if they saw him alive, walking around. Right. <laughs> because they, look, they believe, these people believe he's dead. You have to realize that. These chief priests, they they were trying to kill him. They saw what happened to him. They saw everything that took place. They thought he was dead. I want to read it again because that's really important for us. It says, it says, verse 63, sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So 
give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. So how is, how is the tomb going to be made secure? It's going to be sealed. It's going to have an insignia. They're going to roll it in. They're going to pour a bunch of wax and like a seal a letter. I believe they put an insignia on there that that, would, that that couldn't be broken. I believe that's one thing that happened. The other thing that happened is that they put soldiers there to guard the tomb so that no one would come and steal the body. And I, and, and I believe that because of what it says. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, the disciples may come and steal the body. Well, what, the disciples are, aren't going to steal the body if the body's there. He's gonna, they, they would say the disciples are going to come and let him out. That's what, yeah. what they say. They say steal the body because they believe he's dead. Yeah, go ahead, dear. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say what's interesting is well, who was the government at the time? Rome. And so they placed yeah. Roman soldiers. That was, right. that was, that was, if you were to break into that, you're pretty much marking yourself as a dead person if you try to break into that. Yeah, that's a death sentence for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. yeah. And if and if those and if those soldiers were attacked and didn't die in the attack, then they would get killed because they didn't fulfill their duty. So yeah. th this was serious business, right? This is very yeah. serious. The, that day you were talking about the day preparation is talking about the preparation of Sabbath. Yeah, it was the present day, which was the 15th of Nisan and both a Sabbath and chief day for the Passover festival. Yeah, see, that's that's why I brought brought it up because it wasn't just a regular Sabbath. No, that, no. Remember, it was for the Passover. It was the Passover Sabbath. So that's the day. So that's the day. It says the next day, the one after the preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. So as soon as he died, they went. So it tells you what day they died, what day that Jesus died. That's why that's important. Okay, and it wasn't just a regular Sabbath, but it was a Sabbath, a preparation for. The Passover, because remember they were in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover, right? And it's interesting you know, yeah. how God did that when He delivered them from Egypt with the marking right. of the, with the blood, which some people know, some don't. Here, yeah. it's very symbolic. It's something even greater that God would do for mankind. Yeah, which so it's so it's an important it's an important conversation to have that, but we just had it, so that's good. Yes. All right, good. So so this is what verse sixty five. Take a guard. Not just one guard, but a, but a guard. Uh, Pilate answered, go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal. Remember, that's why I said they put a rock, a, a, a wax on it and put the signet of the, of, the, of the Roman government. They put a seal on the stone and posting the guard. So they had both of those. That's why, that's why I think what happened, because that's what it says happened. And so there's this guard there. There's a seal on the stone that it's like an envelope that if you put a seal on it, you would know if it had been opened or not. It's the same conversation here. And these guys were trying to show everybody that Jesus did not raise from the dead. He could not do it. Yeah. And they believed he was dead. You can, by the wording of this, I think they believed depths that believed he was dead. He wasn't just, he just didn't pass out. He just didn't swoon. You know what's, yeah, what's interesting That's about the two, Rick, this door, I'm reading about it, the mechanics of how it was built. Yeah. You cannot, it could not be open from the inside. There was just no way. No, so no, no, no you, you couldn't not, pull it open from the inside. You couldn't. And and so God, you know, when you read the word of God here, there's just no excuse to say that he did not risen. You know, and so that's really interesting. I like what you said about these various theories because it kind of debunks everything and it just manifests that Christ did really rise from the dead <laughs> yeah it's just crazy to believe some of the stuff yeah. they believe is just just nuts it i mean it defies all logic but you know what when you don't want to believe something you'll believe anything you know that and, and you said, yes and that's so true because you just read it was yesterday and on sunday and on friday okay this is this is how sin is <laughs> the sin of unbelief you talk about christ raises from the dead okay People rose from the dead. A physical curtain was parted. These right. people saw this, and that's what sin does. Like it makes you just be so blind to the truth. Yeah, there were all kinds of there were all kinds of activities that were happening that would show you something wonderful, yeah. spiritual, wonderfully spiritual was happening. Like this, like the sun stopped shining. And 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 look, it's not just like uh, we watched an eclipse not too long ago. It, it, in India, we watched the eclipse of the sun. If you remember, it wasn't very long ago that that happened, but you couldn't see the stars. 
this says this says that you could see the stars. So so it, the sun just stopped shining for three hours. Now I don't know I don't know the science of this. It would be interesting if we had a scientist to tell us. I don't know when the sun stops shining basically for three hours and you don't get any of that sun that heat what it would do to the temperature. But I'm I'm positive it would be a drastic change in everything that's going on in your in it you know with the atmosphere. I'm I'm positive of that. So you've got this drastic change. You see in the middle of the day, you see the stars. What you're seeing at that time is you're seeing for three hours the sin of mankind being poured on Jesus. As soon as that's done, the the the, the sun starts shining again. It's not like an eclipse where it just slowly starts getting it's the sun just starts shining again. You have you have Jesus saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which means I know God that your wrath has been poured upon me. All this, all this happens. All this happens. The, there's an earthquake that happens during that time. There's rocks that split open during that time. There are things. There, there are just all the curtain is torn in two at the. It all happens in a moment, and at that moment, it's it are, it's a great great symbol. It's a great parable for everybody to see that something spiritual is happening in their midst. And then yep. they take him down off the cross. They put him where he, we've talked about it in the tomb of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea. They put him in that tomb. And then what happens is they seal it up and they put some guards there because yep. they say we can't have people see somebody that looks like him. But look, at let me tell you what Jesus does. We haven't gotten to it here. But Jesus is going to spend 40 days after he raises from the dead. He's going to spend 40 days like on the road to Emmaus. He's going to, it says in Corinthians that he, he saw over 500 people at one time. They saw him. He saw them, a crowd of people. I'm, I'm just telling you for 40 days, he comes back and he shows himself as the resurrected Christ. For To me, if you want to know what I think is the most important time period in all of scripture, it's not Genesis when the world was created. It's not it's not the most important time period when Adam and Eve sinned. It's not the most important time period when Jesus was born. It's not even the most important time period when he was quoted to be resurrected. To me, the most important time period, it's just for me, the most important time period is the 40 days between his resurrection and ascension because he proved, he proved to mankind that what he said was true. He proved all the rest of that that came before. He proved the, the creation. He proved the sin of Adam and Eve. He proved, he proved all that. And he put it all into proper perspective when he walked on, the, on this earth 40 days before he ascended to the Father. That to me, for me, is the most important time period because, because you know, you just can't, you just can't not believe if, yeah. you, if you if you start reading that stuff, if you start understanding what happened, and it's not just the Christian community that's saying this, there's there's other literature, historical literature that yeah. makes note of these things. So it's like you ha there's you have to believe. That's what I think. Anyway, go ahead, Uriel. I'm sorry. I can I agree with you? You know. Um, when you begin to do the research, even if whether you're Christian or not, and I did this, you know, um, I began to ask myself, is this Christ really real, who he claims to be? And how do we know? Well, we have written historical proof. That's how it's kept. That's how we know about history. And so as you do the research, you can discover, as you know, we've mentioned Josephus. There, there, I, I remember studying all this and how there was actual proof of this particular this situation that you described happened. So the proof is out there. It's just a matter of you're going to choose to believe and do the research yourself to discover, you know, was this real? And what's interesting, you, you, you've said this before. There's so many writings of, of Plato, Socrates, Aristotle. They've got compiled maybe 18 to 20 of these things, and, and that's considered part of our literature, right? When you look at the Bible, you know this, and some of the people know this. When you look at the book of Luke, it's considered by historians a very historical, accurate book. And so if that's the case, you know, the research is done. I think God has made it so evident for us. Like you just said, how could you not believe? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the just a, just a note, Socrates didn't write anything. Plato yes. wrote everything for Socrates. Socrates, Socrates was, was obviously alive and well and 
it, he lived 300 years before Christ. Um, I've, I've read everything that Plato wrote about Socrates and I, when I studied Socratic logic, you know, uh, read all of the, the literature, but Plato wrote it for Socrates. Socrates, didn't, there's nothing that we have that's penned by Socrates. Yeah. But anyway, it's his conversations that were written down by Plato. Gotcha. So Plato was his scribe. But so, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Anyway, so, so what we have here is, um, is this guard posted, right? Here's this guard posted. This is after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Excuse me. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Well, I, I, I don't, I'm, this is a very curious conversation to me because it could be an earthquake that rolled the stone, <laughs> but, but it doesn't say that. It says that the angel rolled the stone. So, and it says that, that because the angel came down, we had an earthquake. I I don't know how this earthquake fits into this conversation because you could leave the earthquake out and everything would happen. So I don't, that's why this is curious to me. I don't know why Matthew records that there's an earthquake, except maybe that's just what happened. There's an earthquake. And maybe the earthquake is because Jesus rose from the dead. Maybe that was the earth crying out in praise to Christ. Because Jesus says that the rocks will even cry out. Now, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm just trying to figure out why it's in here, <laughs> you know? And, and there are people speculate about this all the time. Who knows? Nobody knows. Do you, do you have any speculation about that, Uriel? Or? No, I can't agree with you. I think, you know, it shows the, the mighty power of who God is, you know, and there's a reason why he does that. It could have been to scare the guards. It could have been just for us to know, like what you said. It's They're just crying out, worshiping God. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there was a violent earthquake, not just an earthquake, a violent earthquake for, and it says why, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And so the angel came down and because the angel came down, there was a violent earthquake. I don't, again, I don't know why it says, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone. So he went to the tomb, the rock didn't move. And maybe that's, maybe that's to show how difficult it was for that stone to be moved. There's a violent earthquake and this, this stone doesn't move from the entrance. And the reason the stone doesn't move from the entrance is because it's, it's stone has got a, a track that it rolls on and right in front of the tomb, it, it goes down like this. So it go, it, it takes a little U shape. And so the stone drops into that U shape. That's why you, it's so hard to get open <laughs> because it's not just, just doesn't roll on a, on a flat surface in front of the uh, opening of the tomb. It rolls and it drops into a little U-shaped channel and it sets in there. And so it, it would take it, it would take an enormous strength to move the stone from that from its place. Okay. So that would that's it's like when you get stuck in the mud in a car and you've got to push and push and push because it's just got that little tiny hole where or in the sand out, out in the desert, you get stuck and there's a little hole that your tire is made and you can't pull the car out no matter what you do because the hole is there and it keeps the tire from moving out. Well, it's the same thing as this stone. It rolled, it fell in that little hole and it stayed there and it wasn't coming out. So there's violent earthquake. The stone doesn't move with the earthquake, which is interesting. And now the angel rolls the stone away. And, uh, and it says that for an angel, the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Now, he appear, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So they... <laughs> Uh, they were out in the spirit, I guess. I don't know. You know, sometimes we see that we don't think it's true or whatever. We don't, we don't want to believe that people fall over or whatever in the presence of God or presence of, but this angel carried the glory of God so much with him that these guys shook and that was it. They're out and they were passed out. They were just gone. You know, now that's a swooning there. That, that's, those are the people that swooned in this story. <laughs> so anyway uh you have anything to share about that uriel no i'm catching up with you i was still uh reading up on matthew 27 oh okay sorry 
I'm, you know, it, it, part of like when I follow you, I'm, I'm thinking about other things. That you no, no, I, I know you're always doing research. That's why I like you hanging out with me. That's, that's where people look at me and I'm looking away from the screen. I'm looking at something Rick is talking about and he's very accurate in what he's saying. <laughs> well, verse five. Well, it's at least it's accurate to the to the commentary you're reading. So that's good. Verse five. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. So the it's amazing it's amazing these these women and how much look the souls the Roman soldiers who were killers and they were they were they were murderers they they were killers they were they were the toughest guys on the planet they were they were special forces you know they were the navy seals they were the toughest guys around they when they saw this thing they passed out when they saw this, this angel, they passed out when these women, they, these women even talked to the angel and, and they weren't afraid, you know, it says, do not be afraid. So they weren't, they, they weren't afraid. Said, I know you're looking for Jesus. I know what you're here to do. So the angel scared those other people to passing out as though they were dead. The Bible says, but these women have, man, these women are tough. <laughs> Look, these women are the ones that were by, near the cross and didn't care. These women, these women, they were always with Jesus. They stood by him during the whole time. His disciples ran away. These were tough, tough women. They were really in love with Jesus. They wanted, they, they knew who he was. They, they had a, an incredible faith and they didn't care what happened to them as they expressed their faith. That's, that's, I want to be like them. Think about that right? These are the, these women, you know, sometimes we just read this and just pass over them, but think about their constitution. Think about how they're built. Think about their bravery and courage. Think about their devotion and faith. These okay. women were not going to go anywhere, but where Christ was, even if they thought his body was dead, the only place they wanted to be where his body was. You know, it's interesting. You just said something really good. Right. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is great. It sends up a great picture. I never, I never, I never saw before. You saw these guards who were the best of the best of the elite, strong yeah. men. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so it represents they did not believe. <clears throat> but you see the might of Christ, of God being displayed before these men. Then right. you have timid women who had no rights in that time of culture. <laughs> Nothing. Right. Yeah. They yeah. totally believe in Christ. They're, little, they're nobodies, not strong people, but you see how God makes you strong from the inside that you don't have to fear God. But then right. you see the mighty power of God on one side for those who don't believe. Then you see his tender love for his children on the other side, how he's comforting them. That's so powerful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, this, these women were amazing. These yeah. women were just amazing. And and we, we, so we sometimes just read over this and don't think about, okay, yeah. they're, they're awesome women, but think about what, think about every, what everybody else did, all the, all the men did, and think about how powerful and courageous and faithful these women were. They were not going to be deterred. They, they there were, was nothing that was going to detour them at all. Yeah, go ahead. This is great because how does it apply for to us? You've said this so many times over the last couple of days. Okay, allow scripture to be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. God had Jesus Christ had told them, He had told them, all right, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. So he prepared them. He was right. fulfilling scripture. Scripture is being fulfilled. So I wonder at what point they were thinking, oh, right. And so they were able to trust. For us, it's the same way. Trust in scripture to be fulfilled in your life, in right. no matter what circumstance that you're in. Right. And so that's, it goes back, this goes back to the 40 days. That's why, that's why they did trust Jesus. These women were, were not doubting at all. They trusted him. They had the courage to show they were trusting him and their trust was rewarded because Jesus came back and taught them. You know, they were part of the people that Jesus taught. Their trust was rewarded. I, I just think this is the most incredible thing that these women have such amazing courage and they're not backing down. They're just not backing down. That's it. You can't get them to back down. You, you, you can't make them do that. They're not going to. So anyway, um, 
The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. So they have, look at these specific instructions. Look, there they get specific instructions. It's That's the way God is with us. God tells us exactly what to expect and what to do. Watch. Look at the instructions. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place. So first they were supposed to come and see. The first thing we're supposed to do is come and see Jesus. Come and see the place where he lay. Come and see Jesus. Come and see him. Try him out. Come and see. He is God, but you, but he's going to allow you to come and see him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him, say, I want to believe in you. I want to be like the, I want to be a person of courage. I, I want to give my life to you. I want to come and see you. And doesn't the Bible say, behold, I stand at the door and knock in Revelation 3.20? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice, I will open the door. Or you, excuse me, you open the door and I will come in and, and sup with him and he with me. You open the door. I'm knocking on the door. You open it up. I'll come in and we'll have fellowship together. Come and see the place where he where he lay. Come and see Jesus. So that's the first place. What they're, but what they're looking for is an empty tomb. Come and see how empty this tomb is. Then go quickly. So don't stay here. No reason to be here because he's not here. So don't see what we, what we would do sometimes. And we do this sometimes we spend more time with the religious than with doing the religious thing than we do spend time knowing Christ. Right. And this says, come and see that he's not here. And then don't stay here. Don't memorialize this place. Like we, we tend to do. Don't come here and, and kneel at this place and, and worship because he's risen from the dead. Don't come and do all that. Don't do that. Leave, he says. Right? Yeah. It says, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. So the disciples were not told. We're told that the disciples ran to the grave after they heard. The disciples weren't supposed to run to the grave. The disciples were told to go to the get to go to Galilee where Jesus is going to go meet them, but they had to go satisfy their, their curiosity <laughs> and they had to run. The, but, but they could have had their curiosity if, if they just would have went to Galilee, <laughs> but they didn't. It's okay. They're not in trouble for it. They didn't do anything wrong, but it's just like us, right? It takes sometimes it takes extra revelation sometimes for us to believe it yeah, takes yeah. extra stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, um, for them, not, it wasn't just to see that he wasn't there, but it was also to show them like what you just said, to satisfy their curiosity. If they had doubt, he said he said he was going to do. He was going right. to overcome the power of sin and then death, and the death could not hold them down. And, and so he said, said, yeah, but he said, this is the cool, this is one of the other cool things about this conversation we're having. He said that he would give up his life and he yeah. would take it back up again. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So he, so he took it back up. It, he died when he wanted to, when it was the right time. And he rose when he was supposed to do, it was the right time. He laid it down and he took it up. He's the one who was in charge of death. Yeah. I, and it's good because this fits in great into Colossians one, where it talks about he is the creator of all things and by his hands, all things are held together. Right. And so it was right. his authority that he laid down his life that yeah. he is the creator of all things above all things. So this yeah. was great for him to see that like, oh my goodness, it was real what he said. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So it says, go tell the disciples. It says, then go quickly and tell his disciples. This is what he's supposed to tell the disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Now watch, there you will see him. So <laughs> now... Now I have told you. So he said, this is what you're supposed to do. Go tell the disciples to go to Galilee because there you're going to see him. 
listen to me. He didn't tell them to go to the tomb, even though they ran to the tomb. It was probably good that they did so that they could see. And I'm not saying they did anything wrong. We, we would have done the same thing. But he, they're not instructed to go look into the tomb. They're instructed to go to Galilee because there they're going to see him. They're not going to see him in the tomb because he's not there. So that's what, I, that's what I want us to understand. God is telling us to do certain things. If we follow him specifically, the greater blessing follows that. But we have to do exactly what he says. Now, these guys ran to the tomb. Okay, okay. But then they went to Galilee. They did finally get on the track. And sometimes it takes us a little little extra to get on the track and get do, doing what God's telling us to do. So anyway, I, we're not mad at him for that. Rick, what you're talking about, what he's telling us to do, how does that apply for us as well? What you just said is go tell them that he has risen from the dead. They were the first yeah. to proclaim the good news. Right. And that right. God, we're, we're called, we're commanded to go right. proclaim this. Yeah. Yeah. So the women in verse eight hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy well okay all right and ran to tell his disciples now watch the disciples were going to meet them the disciples were going to meet them in galilee watch but they get to meet him sooner they 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 get a preview they get to see Jesus before the disciples. Now, I wonder why Jesus did this. Do you think, do you suppose it could be because the women were people of such courage and they, they had such courage and they're the ones that stuck around the cross and they're the ones that came to the tomb first and they're the ones that wouldn't run. Do you suppose that Jesus said, man, ladies, I see, think you're awesome. I'm going to show you me first. <laughs> I'm coming to you first because you never ran away from me. Maybe, I don't know, but I think that probably has something to do with it. These women were women of courage, women of faith. They did not doubt. And guess who gets to see Jesus first? They do. <laughs> I think that's cool, right? So right. the women hurried away from the tomb. And we'll do that again. Afraid and, and yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. They knew exactly who he was with, at this greeting. Jesus wasn't hiding himself. They fell at his feet and worshiped him. Now, now listen, this has only been three days. If he was never dead, he would not be up walking around all cleaned up. You have to realize they put him into the tomb and he was all beat up. He was scarred. He was had dried blood all over him. He was had a, he had a spear hole in his side that blood came out of. He had nails in his hands. A blood. He was a bloody mess. But he's not a bloody mess here. He's all cleaned up because all of that bloody mess was a was his blood that washed over sin and got rid of all the sin. But it was also the result of sinners the result of sin coming on. That was the reason that all happened to him because it was of sin. And Jesus didn't want any of that on him. He came out, he came clean. Just like it says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Jesus stood before them. Absolutely beautiful. Now watch. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So he, they've been instructed twice, Go to Galilee. Go to Galilee. Go to Galilee. Look, Jesus is telling us to go to Galilee. Not physically, to get a plane ticket and fly over there. And go to Galilee. Not That's not what I'm talking about. He's not instructing us for that. Jesus is instructing us to go to Galilee, to go see him, to worship him, to fall in love with him. Why were they supposed to go to Galilee? They were supposed to go to Galilee to see Jesus. It wasn't the Galilee that was a, that was the issue. It was the seeing Jesus that was the issue. I'm sorry, somebody's calling me on my home phone. Sorry about that. Anyway, it was it's going to Galilee for a purpose, to see Jesus. Look, today is the day for us to see Jesus. 
I want you to just say, Jesus, I want to meet you. I want, look, you've done all this for me. I want to live my life for you. That's where we need to go. Now, there's a couple things today that I'm very thankful for. Very thankful for. The first is the word of God. The second is Pastor Uriel. The third is we had no glitches on the broadcast today. Amen and amen and amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, there's a lot more to be thanked, my family, everything else. But for those three things, right now at this moment, I'm very thankful. I'm thankful for the word. I'm thankful that it says, go, come to a place to see me. And right now, because of the Holy Spirit, all we have to do is say, Lord, here I am. I need to have a touch from you. I want to fall down at your feet and worship you. I want to tell you how awesome, how awesome it is to have a response, to have a response to you. Thank you for letting me understand that my sins are forgiven. They're cast as far as the east is from the west, as far into the deepest depths of the ocean. And God, you made a place for me. You made a way for me. You tore the curtain in half so that I could come through. You want to be with me. You're standing at the door and knocking right now. And I want to be with you. Right now is a great time to worship. Right now is a perfect time to begin worshiping God. And you might be afraid because like they were, but you could also be filled with joy just like these women were. I was. They were afraid, but filled with joy, it says. I love that statement. They were afraid, but filled with joy. They were filled with joy because they were anticipating seeing Jesus again. They knew he had kept his word and, ra and was raised from the dead. They couldn't wait. And then they got to see him before anybody else. <laughs> and then he says, go to Galilee so I can see you there. I want to spend time with you. Look, Jesus wants to spend time with us. This is such an amazing story. And he did it all, all, all for us. He loves us that much. Isn't that great? It's amazing. Look, I know we're over time, but God bless you. Uriel, what are you thinking, buddy? <laughs> it's joyful hearing this. It's very... Uh, <laughs> well, listen, you're, you're his favorite, Uriel. Sorry, I interrupted you. You're his favorite. You really are. And you're my favorite today. You, you fixed it all up. Thank you. God bless you guys. You're his favorite out there too. God loves you. We will see you tomorrow and we'll start chapter 28 um with uh i think it's verse 11 chapter 28 verse 11 tomorrow so if you I want to start reading ahead you can all right god bless you we'll see you later bye